ES-400 is known as one of, if not the most powerful and capable air defense systems in the world. It's incredibly long range, coupled with some of the most powerful radars, and built and improved with over seven decades of experience, makes it a formidable threat to any enemy trying to get past. So, how can we beat it? But first, our sponsor, Commando Store. They are always getting new military surplus that's functional, durable, and historically significant. Unlike other surplus shops, their gear is sorted by native size and it's graded for condition, giving collectors and active users a better idea of what to expect when they buy. They also commission reproductions of gear that's no longer available, like the West German Polizei Bomber Jacket, the South African Waxy Boot, and an assortment of other cultural artifacts and accessories to match. With classic surplus drying up worldwide, Commando Store makes it a core value to preserve the historical and cultural significance of these era-defining artifacts, and to offer them at a higher quality level than the average dusty surplus warehouse. Their mailing list is the best way to keep up with their ever-changing inventory. And if you sign up right now, you'll get a code for some free snacks from their store. Just pay shipping. They'll send you four or five emails a month letting you know what's in stock, where it came from, what the history is, and some bonus humor. You won't want to miss out on their rare surplus, limited run reproductions, or their off-the-wall sales. So go check them out at commandostore.com slash covercabal, or just go click the link down in the description. Again, Commando Store. If you've ever played a game like DCS, you know full well how dangerous they can be. Or a game I really enjoy, Command Modern Operations, where they seem to be invincible. You can launch 20 Tomahawk cruise missiles at it, and it just shoots them all down with ease. Often the only way to beat them is to simply drain their missiles till they're empty. To be honest though, I think air defense systems in these games are way too capable. One thing that games typically have a hard time factoring in is the human element. Operators can't always be at full 100% attention and alert 24-7 without ever taking a break, or even in a surprise attack. In real life, it might catch them off guard. Games also don't often factor in atmospheric variables, which can affect radar performance, or mechanical limitations or failures, etc. But in real life, if you are having to deal with an S-400, you can't depend on its operator being distracted or just hoping the radar isn't operating perfectly. You have to assume it's working and deal with it accordingly. So some of the tactics that you might use in DCS or Command could apply in real life. There is one extremely simple way to defeat an S-400 and that is by going around it. They are relatively immobile compared to aircraft, so flying around the outside of its range completely negates an S-400's ability to have any useful value whatsoever, and that's one of the biggest shortfalls of ground-based air defense. This is one of the reasons why the US hasn't focused on building up a large number of highly capable SAM systems. Interceptor aircraft just work so much better. They can fly out to a threat and engage it. The problem with interceptor aircraft are they are expensive. They require much more maintenance, and in some situations, they cannot respond quick enough to a threat. The US has by far the largest defense budget in the world. They are also half a world away from any real threat, and operate aircraft carriers and escorts that do have many highly capable SAM systems on board. So this isn't much of a problem for them. But going back, you can't always just avoid air defense. The point of air defense is just that to defend an area or a site from threats from the air. Therefore, they typically will be positioned at locations that an enemy would want to strike, like Severomosk in the surrounding area, for example. It is the headquarters for Russia's northern fleet, houses numerous submarines and warships, including the Admiral Kuznetsov aircraft carrier, and it's defended by a massive air defense site complete with 24 launchers in the most recent satellite image. So they often just can't be avoided. So you first have to understand what you're up against. That site, again, with 24 launchers, each one carries four missiles, which means 96 total ready to launch. You might hear about how the S-400 has a range of 400 kilometers, and well, that depends on which missile it carries. They can, and often do, have a mix. That longest range one is a version of the 40N6. They'll also carry variants of the 48N6 family of missiles, with a somewhat shorter range between 150 to 250 kilometers. And they also have shorter range 9M96 missiles with a maximum range of anywhere from just 40 to 125 kilometers. Most of these missiles are semi-active radar homing, which means that they require data relayed from it from an external radar to guide it to its target. Some versions of the 40N6 have a fully active radar homing method of guidance. These rely at first on an external radar, just like semi-active, but they also contain a smaller radar in the missile itself for terminal guidance. 
However, due to the much smaller size of the missile, power constraints, weight constraints, etc., that radar is not very powerful. It still needs that external radar information to get it in close enough to a target before its own radar can see it, which is likely only a dozen or so kilometers, depending on how big the target is. So, that there is something that you can exploit if you're trying to attack an S-400. If one fired on you, if you can break that direct line of sight from the external radar on the ground, it won't be able to find and hit you. This could be anything from mountains, terrain, trees, anything to block its view. For this reason, many search and engagement radars are mounted up high for a better view of its surroundings. And these sites tend to also be positioned on top of hills or elevated locations, making it harder to sneak up on. Again, going back to that site near Severomosk, you can see that it's positioned on top of a hill. Flying in low, or using terrain following cruise missiles that fly real close to the ground as much as possible can help a lot too. First, as mentioned, to mask yourself from the radars of the SAM site, but also if there are any background objects behind you, it can make detection much more difficult. Many SAM systems, like the S-400, have two different types of radars, a search radar and an engagement radar. The search radar is the one that probably most people are familiar with. It'll spin around searching everywhere. If it finds something, that data can be sent over to the engagement radar to direct its more focused beam at it. The lower the ratio of physical antenna size to frequency it radiates, the less focused that beam will be. This makes something called side lobes, which can create clutter and make detection much more difficult when there are surrounding objects, like trees, hills, buildings, etc. And those search radars tend to have a lower frequency, so this becomes more of a problem. When they are first set up, they'll often scan the surroundings so they can help filter out clutter later, but it's still somewhat of an issue. The engagement radars tend to operate on a higher frequency, and their antenna is roughly the same size of that as a search radar. So they have a higher ratio, which means they have a much more focused radio beam. Therefore, this isn't really a problem for them. But engagement radars, as the name implies, aren't good at searching. That's what the search radars are for. So flying in low among the clutter can really help to get in undetected. The goal of these tricks is to close the distance. Things like the S-400 are incredibly lethal at long ranges. So the closer you can get in, the easier it is. This also cuts the amount of time that the site has to defend itself from attack. If you launch a harm missile, flying at 2,000 km per hour at it from 100 km away, the site would have roughly 3 minutes to detect, track, and launch a missile and engage it. But if you can get closer and launch at, say, 20 km, that cuts reaction time down to just 36 seconds. Stealth is another way you can get in close. As we know, stealth doesn't make you invisible, but just makes you appearing smaller on radar. The smaller you are, the range at which the radar can spot you becomes shorter. Detection range is in proportion to the fourth root of RCS, which is the size of the aircraft on radar. So, if, say, a radar can detect an F-15 at 500 kilometers away, then an F-22, with an RCS 10,000 times smaller, would only be detected at 10% of that range, or 50 kilometers. Another way to get in closer, or just to reduce the effectiveness of the site so you can avoid it, is radar jamming. When jamming, an aircraft is emitting a signal back at the enemy radar itself, so that the enemy does not know if the signals it is receiving are theirs, or the fake ones. And since radar uses the time that it takes for a signal to return to calculate the range, an aircraft jamming would appear to be constantly changing distances. Also, depending on the type of radar, more typical in older radars, Jamming in this manner can create the appearance of the aircraft being on different bearings as well. With these two combined, the radar will get returns from all over at different distances and different directions. There eventually gets a point where the ground radar's power can overcome jamming, which is called burn-through, so it'll only work to a certain extent. But it can allow you to get in much closer to a target than without it. And the closer you can get, the better. Now, as for actually attacking a site, there are several tricks. As you might have noticed, these radars are extremely important. They are the eyes of the SAM site. Without them, they are blind and useless. So, you don't need to destroy the entire site. You don't even need to destroy the launchers. The radars are the weak spot. If you can take out that engagement radar, you can put the entire site out of commission. Also, those search radars typically spin around as they're searching the skies for any threat. Engagement radars typically don't. Instead, they'll only rotate to look in a direction once receiving information from the search radar. And, as mentioned earlier, most of the missiles the S-400 uses requires information from that engagement radar to go after a target. That engagement radar can only see in the direction it's pointed in, so attacking the site from two different directions simultaneously can be incredibly effective. 
it won't be able to guide any missiles to intercept if it's currently facing in a different direction to guide missiles that way. As for specific weapons used, you have quicker ones like HARM, HARM, or High Speed Anti-Radiation Missile, will home in on any radar signals, which is perfect if you seek to destroy radars. Their quick speed cuts down response time. Other options include low-flying cruise missiles skimming just above the terrain. They are not as fast, but instead rely on their low altitude to cut response time. Another weapon that's becoming more popular recently are glide bombs. These are unpowered, so they have to be launched from a higher altitude. The higher they are dropped, the further their range is. Things like the STB and Stormbreaker, for example, are incredibly small, enabling an aircraft to carry many more of them. A single FA-18 carrying eight can create a lot of targets for a SAM site to deal with, and this brings up saturation attacks. You can simply fire more weapons at it than the SAM site can handle. A typical S-400 might include four, but typically eight TELs, or launchers, which means 16 to 32 missiles ready to fire. So, if you launch any more than that, you can virtually guarantee a hit. This is partly why more high-value targets, like Severo Mosk, might have SAM sites with many more launchers, so they can deal with much larger attacks. Another tactic Russia often uses is to couple an S-400 site with short-range air defenses, like Panzer. These have a quicker response time and can help deal with any threat that sneaks up on it and gets within minimum range of the longer range S-400. Decoys are another method used. These can be launched and appear on radar and even emit signals to appear to be an enemy aircraft. The hope is that the SAM site will be fooled into attacking these, all while the actual aircraft can slip in and attack it. And finally, an air defense site does just that, defends from the air. If you can get in close on the ground, you can easily attack the target barring any ground forces defending it, or getting close enough for long-range artillery and rockets. Lockheed Martin released an animation, for some reason they later deleted, of their new PRSM, which has a range of over 500 kilometers, attacking an engagement radar of an S-400 site. Artillery is much more difficult to defend against, as they are much smaller and much less expensive, enabling you to be able to fire a lot more of them. So, the S-400 is a formidable system, but there are ways to destroy it and the U.S. military has spent a lot of time devising ways to do so. In fact, just recently, the U.S. carried out the so-called African Lion Exercise, where they attacked two simulated S-400 sites. They didn't say how they did it, but it shows how serious the U.S. takes the threat that they pose. So far, no S-400 has ever been used in combat, so we still don't know quite how effective they will actually be. All that, and a lot more, remains to be seen.